Welcome to the very first episode of the Tech Pod. Every Tuesday, a new technology update, and here we go. We have Microsoft news, Apple news, and AI news. You see a preview that the godfather of AI quit Google. So what else? <clears throat> Microsoft build coming in May. Also, we have a fireside chat with Bill Gates on the Visual Studio front. There is integration of Unreal Engine. On Apple, we have a leak of iOS 17 and unhappy Apple em employees who were not the biggest fans of Siri. On the AI, we have ChatGPT with new features. There is an alternative to ChatGPT coming from Hugging Face. Meta is playing catch up on the AI front. And on miscellaneous news, we have a little update about something called Blue Sky, and what are tech billionaires investing if it's not in AI? Microsoft first, like said in Seattle, you can go there on premises on site on May twenty two, three and twenty four. There's a pre day workshop, but you can also attend online for free, and that is a two day event. Check it out online. At build.microsoft.com, day one will be kicked off by Sachi Nadella with the keynote. More on that on a later front. Microsoft's chief commercial officer Justin Althoff posted a quite lengthy blog post about the era of AI. So I clicked the Bing button and asked, "All right, what is the key insights?" One of the things that it showed was Azure Copilot. So I was like, "Hmm, I've known something in." Copilot for Viva for Teams. Microsoft 365 is coming up with a Copilot. Put an Azure uh, Copilot. Not really. So tell me more about it. Well, it's search. It's search. It's found something on the web text in relation to Dynamics. But then it concluded there is no such thing as Azure Copilot. So I guess our jobs are still safe. Next, staying in the Visual Studio part, they are integrating Unreal Engine with Visual Studio now. You might think that Unreal Engine is purely game related, but if you check out the Unreal Engine 5.2 and the Meta Human, they are making hyper realistic characters. So I think aside game development, the role of Unreal Engine when it comes to 3D rendering, the real world, it is amazing. So Fisher Studio also in quite some depth about the GitHub Copilot. Now there's a lot of information. So again, I press that Bing button in my browser to give some key points. Here they are. Pause it to read it, so you don't have to. The fireside chat is on Gates Notes, the personal blog of Bill Gates, and he had a fireside chat with Jesse Woolley Wilson, the president and CEO of Dreambox Learning. As a matter of fact, Bill Gates spoke a lot about his interest and his. Thought of integration and what it turns out, he is investing heavily with the Gates Foundation into Moth. Windows 11 is adding a phone link option for iOS. It is introduced first for Android, especially since Microsoft mobile devices like the surveys is run Android. But now they're offering compatibility and support for iOS devices soon. It's rolling out already. At least you can see your messages. Maybe even pick up your phone. I'm not so sure if you can actually make FaceTime calls on your Windows 11 device. <clears throat> More in Windows 11, a very small feature that has been added, but quite useful. Aside from screenshotting, just making images with the snipping tool, you have now the option right there, or maybe right there next to the camera icon. Actually, make video snippets. You can screen record, if you will. Of course, you have that option also in PowerPoint, but now in the snipping too as well. Bridging to Apple news. First of all, there is a mock-up alleged iOS 17 wallet that is integrating the new financial options or services that Apple is offering, like Apple Pay Later, and recently announced Apple Savings, which is offering a, I think a swooping four point. Five or four point fifteen percent interest on your savings. Well, sign me up. Sadly, it's only in the U.S. for starters. But uh, since uh, Apple is having billions of euros and dollars across the whole world, I wouldn't be surprised if they roll out this option worldwide soon. Secondly, about Siri, 
yeah, even Apple employees are not a big fan. They're very skeptical about its future, and people are even quitting and going to Google and other AI chatbots alternatives to Siri in this case. So while the hopes are high when it comes to the mobile devices like the iPhone, and when it comes to probably the AR or at least the Apple first headset, if you will, that's announced in June, uh, we're not so sure about the role of Siri because I can relate. Speaking to Siri, doesn't understand, misunderstands different names, different actions. So we'll, we'll see what happened on the Siri front soon. On the AI, which is a bridge from Siri anyways, a lot of news. So like said, the godfather of AI, Geoffrey Hinton, quit his job at Google. And he basically said, I don't want to be the Oppenheimer that is making the nuclear bomb, but then the digital version of that. So he is very worried about the risks. I think we do need regulation, but I do see also the potential. But it's a good thing that we all start worrying a little bit more about AI and not just looking at the technological upsides. Speaking of AI, one of the most popular options you have right now is ChatGPT. And one of their concerns was privacy. There was even a news that Samsung completely forbid their employees after finding out that they entered very top secret software code into ChatGPT. Now they have an option to disable the chat history so that data will not be used for training its model. If you are more worried about your privacy concerns, there is an big community of AI called Hugging Face and it's releasing its very own version of ChatGPT. It's called Hugging Chat. They did look quite, quite well to ChatGPT because in all honesty, it's basically a clone. The whole interface, the inner workings, who knows, but the interface is basically identical. Speaking of AI and catching up, Meta, they are trying to catch up on the generative AI department. Stakeholders of Meta told Mark Zuckerberg, nice view on your metaverse, billions of US dollars tanked into the metaverse, but without much result. However, Mark Zuckerberg still says that the metaverse is definitely not out of focus. They are pivoting to the AI department. If you ask me though, I see AI and the metaverse going hand in hand, but that is a completely different story. Now, Mark Zuckerberg already laid off around 11,000 jobs in November 2022. There is a new round coming and it is hurting morale. It's not just at Meta, but software engineers worldwide are panicking about being replaced by AI. Now, <clears throat> there is a lot of stories and evidence that AI, like ChatGPT, is capable of generating working software code. It is just the same for many other jobs that you will not be replaced by AI, but that you will be replaced by somebody using AI better or more than you do. So call to action, everybody. Start using, learning, improving on your AI skills. In the miscellaneous department, two items already said it. If the tech billionaires are not investing in AI, well then, well, they see fusion as the holy grail for business. They basically see a limitless energy source, clean energy with the use of fusion. Now, I don't think they are nonprofits, but of course they are looking into this as an investment. However, with the climate crisis and changes coming, well, I think we should welcome anything that is clean energy. And if it's limitless, why not? Lastly, speaking about alternatives not to OpenAI, but to Twitter, since Elon Musk took over a lot of exchange, a lot of rumors, a lot of issues. Jack Dorsey, the initial founder of Twitter, started Blue Sky a while ago, and it is basically a decentralized version of Twitter and sort of protocol. That was the first episode of TechPod. My name is Mike van Zandwijk. Subscribe or like and share this TechPod. So thank you for watching or listening. Share with your friends. Give some feedback. So thank you so much and see you next Tuesday.